Can you imagine winning the way the warriors win? Being a key part of it, and then saying and truly believing this? I mean, I always think about this John Wooden quote. He said, it's amazing what a team can do when nobody cares who gets the credit. Today, we're talking about how a leader can drive to that kind of winning mentality and have the championship outcomes to go with it. At the organizational level, you do your best to make things fair. And at the individual level, you have to make choices and own them. Let's get started. How do you design a system that is fair and just? In 1971, philosopher John Rawls put forth a thought experiment called the veil of ignorance. If you could create any system from nothing, what would it look like? And how should you advantage or disadvantage different people in that system? The Farnham Street blogs, one of my favorite blogs, and they write that the veil of ignorance would lead to you cutting a pizza into equal sized slices so that everyone may have a shot at a good slice. If you imagine a veil of ignorance in which you know nothing of yourself, your natural abilities, your position, gender, race, nationality, or taste, Rawls says we would design a system that was more fair, where rights liberties, power, and opportunity, and the conditions necessary for self-respect were accessible to all, where people can improve their position, but most importantly, I think, if there is inequality, it must be present solely because it benefits everyone. And in that last part is something every leader must realize. An ideal system creates more abundance for all. The point is not to be equal in the end. The point is to create a system in which the most abundance can be created. And I think increasingly, especially now in these lost sort of modern times, people are desperate for equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity. And this is why Rawls's theory is only a thought experiment, not the world we live in. Ability and capability and intelligence are not equally distributed. So it's still your job as a leader to put the right people who are most fit to perform in the right seats to build the best possible outcome for everyone. We live in a time where a lot of people are starting to believe we can wave a magic wand and make everyone equal by fiat that a person couldn't possibly have a fever if we don't have thermometers, but you and I know that's not true. Whether or not you have a fever is unrelated to whether or not thermometers exist. And that's our duty at the organizational level, to design a fair system of equality of opportunity for the greater good, measure and track the right things, give people a fair opportunity, but also you can't stop being discerning so that the best outcome can be obtained, not merely the most facile equal one. Org design is dependent on what roles and responsibilities you give to individuals. Here's what Steve Jobs said about how he organized Apple. We are organized like a startup. One person's in charge of iPhone OS software. One person's in charge of Mac hardware. One person's in charge of iPhone hardware engineering. Another person's in charge of Worldwide marketing, another person's in charge of operations. It's, we're organized like a startup. We're the biggest startup on the planet. When you design an org properly, it's not a committee where nobody has responsibility and everyone has a say. You have to pick the right people to have the right role and let them have authority. If you're the CEO or founder, it shouldn't go to you every single time in all things. That's not delegation, that's tyranny. And there's tremendous teamwork at the top of the company, which filters down to tremendous teamwork throughout the company. And teamwork is dependent on trusting the other folks to come through with their part without watching them all the time, but trusting that they're gonna come through with their parts. And that's what we do really well. And we're great at figuring out how to divide things up into these great teams that we have and all work on the same thing touch bases frequently, and bring it all together into a product. We do that really well. 
But how do you resolve conflict in those cases? Here's Steve earlier in his next computer years. I've never believed in the theory that if, if we're on the same management team and a decision has to be made and I decide in a way that you don't like, and I say, come on, buy into the decision, you know, buy into it. Like we're all on the same team. You don't agree, but buy into it. Let's go make it happen. Because what happens is sooner or later, um, you're paying somebody to do what they think is right, but then you're trying to get them to do what they think isn't right. And, it, it, and sooner or later it outs and, and you, you end up having that conflict. So I've always felt that the best way is to get everybody in a room and talk it through in, until you agree. Now that's not everybody in the company, uh, but that's everybody that's really involved in that decision that needs to, to execute. If you nail the top-down org design and principles by which you operate and build a team and empower them, while also setting the right way to get through conflict, well, that's a lot. But if you can do all that, you're on the right track to building an org that can build things that are insanely great. And the, the key to making that work is to realize there's not that many things that any one team really has to decide. And we, we might have 25 really important things we have to decide on a year. Not a lot. If it is to be, it is up to me, but also all the people around me too. When you are in charge of designing systems and orgs for people, we have a duty to each other to try to build the world we want to live in. We have to design for what exists in reality, not in a utopia that doesn't exist. And these things are hard because people are hard, complicated, and our brains are incapable of handling the cognitive load of the complexity of modern problems. But luckily, we have each other. We have teams of people to drive the right 25 decisions. And if you take heed of what we talked about today, you'll be on the right track. I'll see you next week. Thank you.